I'm doing it again. It's just over 200 pages long. I clearly should not have said that these are under 200 pages. Let's rehash this too. They're under 250 pages long. <laughs> Hello my loves and thank you for joining me. It's Kirsten and I am doing 12 short classics that I have really really enjoyed. So I recently did a video of how to get into classics and I hope that was helpful but I did talk about one of my big tips is actually just trying a short classic. So I have got 12 books that are all less than 200 pages long. You could easily finish them in a day if you wanted to. Let's get straight into it. I am so excited. <laughs> so the one that I did talk about during that how to get into classics video is Camilla by Sheridan Lofano. This is an amazing vampire classic so perfect for the spooky season and it is a really really quick book. This book does not get anywhere near as much hype as it should considering it is one of the books that inspired Dracula and that book definitely gets a lot more spotlight than this one. This is fantastic, it is sapphic vampires I mean, could we get any better than that? It's got a perfect gothic setting. We're following our main character. She lives alone with her father. And one day, this girl ends up in a carriage accident right near their house. And so they take her in and they form a really fast friendship. And then things start getting more and more sinister. And you realize, obviously, the girl is a vampire. And it's so good. I love it. It's all about like forbidden desires, exploring, especially like, the constraints on women during that time about how same-sex relationships were really frowned upon and how our main character feels so conflicted for these feelings about loving this girl but also feeling like she really shouldn't. It's a fantastic book, I highly recommend it and as I said it is perfect for gothic season so even if you've got no other reason to read it, read it for Halloween. It's perfect. I love it so much. And then we have a mismatch. So I've done quite a few different genres. These are all short stories I have read. So because it is me, a lot of them are gothic inspired, but we also have some murder mysteries and other bits involved. This is just going to be in no particular order. So we're just going to go for it. And also this is really good for anyone that is taking part in my 24 hour readathon for any classics that you want to be able to read in a day for that readathon. So we have The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This is criminally underrated. It's a fantastic short story and it really packs a punch. It is looking at how women were treated due to things like hysteria or things like postnatal depression, how they actually dealt with it and that was by being locked away in a room. It really highlights how women were treated medically back then. It's harrowing and disturbing but brilliant at the same time. We're following this woman who was recently given birth but is very depressed because of this and she is struggling so much and so her husband puts her in this room which is in the attic and it's, it's horrendous. We have a bed that's been bolted down, we have the wallpaper which is peeling and you see this woman's disintegration of her mind, how it just ends up falling all apart for her. It's really, really well written. It's got those gothic vibes as well. We are dealing with quite a lot of tropes that were prevalent during classics in terms of the woman in the attic trope as well as just highlighting how women were treated back then. It's fantastic would really recommend. It's so criminally underrated, I can't believe it. And this particular one is introduced by Maggie O'Farrell and she does a great job of exploring and explaining the concepts of this book and that really gave me more insight into this as well. So I would highly recommend this one. Then of course we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I love this book. This is one of the ones that I would like to read myself on the 24 hour readathon. I love Frankenstein so much. I've only actually read it once but it's brilliant and it is all about Victor Frankenstein who is at university and he is pushing the moral boundaries of what is right and it's about a little experience science experiment of recreating life from dead body parts and then just his utter failure at dealing with what he has created, at taking responsibility. It looks at hubris of mankind. There is also love in this. There is something going on for everything and it's really not a long book. I think people don't realise how short it actually is. This Because a lot of books, they will have notes on the books, they will have extra things. Like a lot of it really isn't that long. So this one, okay, it's just over what I said of 200 pages. It's 228, okay, 230 pages long. 
but I think for 30 pages it's worth it, it's definitely worth it, I think it's fantastic, again gothic literature at its finest, it is one of our classics for a reason, it's so so good. Moving out of the gothic classic we've got a murder mystery, so of course I had to mention Sherlock Holmes. I love Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's creation of Sherlock Holmes and Dr Watson, they are fantastic and the first one, A Study in Scarlet, is teeny absolutely tiny. So this one is 135 pages long, this is where we first meet Sherlock Holmes, where Dr Watson is meeting him, becoming his roommate and realising just how extraordinary Sherlock Holmes is. We have his first case that gets solved. What I love about these books is you have the first half which is the mystery and then the second half which is is why it all happened, why the criminal did what they did. Really, really good, highly recommend anything Sherlock Holmes, to be quite honest. Amazingly, a lot of those books are actually small. Even The Hound of the Baskervilles, which I think is the longest book, is, oh, it's literally just over 200 pages. It's 214 pages, so anything to be quite honest, by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in the Sherlock Holmes collection is really good, really quick, really short, amazing to get into, and who doesn't like a good murder mystery? Then we have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I, again, love this one. I actually only read it recently, and this one is, oh, I'm doing it again, it's just over 200 pages long. I clearly should not have said that these are under 200 pages. Let's rehash this too, they're under 250 pages long. <laughs> terrible but they are this is another fantastic one so we are following Dorian Gray who is this amazingly beautiful person and he is having his portrait painted and some one of his friends comments on the fact of how beautiful that portrait is at least that portrait will always show that he was young forever and Dorian Gray goes you know what I would give up anything to stay this young and looking this beautiful forever and it does happen. Everything that sh Dorian Gray does that should inflict something on his body or just how he does horrible acts that would then mar the human soul instead of affecting his body affects his portrait instead and so he hides it away, doesn't let anyone see it and Dorian Gray stays this pristine perfect human being but his portrait is hideous and disfigured and just gross because of his acts and what he has done. It's a really interesting look into human morals and also just in general about, I find within literature of this time period, they did a lot where outer image is a reflection of how you look inside. So if you were had, if you had a disability of some form, you were the villain. And it's a really interesting look at concepts during that time so would highly recommend this one as well and it's gay I know so many people say it's not it's, it's gay then we have The Great God Pan by Arthur Machin now this is a short story collection so all of the short stories together are actually only 162 pages long but this is broken down into four short stories I would say the first one The Great God Pan is my absolute favorite that it was fantastic but all these short stories they range from being 60 pages long to 20 to yeah, you get the idea. Really good, really interesting, again more on the gothic size, you have themes about the occult in this as well, it's a really interesting book. It's something that I've never really heard anyone talk about but would highly recommend. It's hailed by Stephen King as one of the best horror stories ever written when he's talking about the great god Pan and it really is, it had me on the edge of my seat, I loved it, it was so good, had the perfect atmospheric dark gothic vibes, I yeah loved this this one would highly recommend again perfect for this spooky season but also in general if you like gothic fiction highly recommend then something for christmas time we do have charles dickens christmas books this is a bind up so it's not this whole thing there are short stories in this one so christmas carol is the one that i've read and i actually plan on reading one of these every year so we have five short stories in here that all revolve around christmas time and a christmas carol is 90 pages long which is the one that i'm recommended i just don't have a separate copy of that fantastic come on it's, it's great for christmas Christmas time. Should I have saved it till then? Probably, but it was still a really good book. It is a ghost story and I loved it. I'm really looking forward to reading another one of these short stories across Christmas. I read Christmas Carol on Christmas Eve. It was the perfect time to read it. Would highly recommend these, especially if you ever, like, if you haven't read these or if you want to try Charles Dickens but have never read any of his works, then do try Christmas Carols over Christmas. 
can't think of a better time to read it, it's fantastic. Then we have a book that I did talk about during my how to get into reading classics video and that is Matilda by Mary Shelley. This is a really short book, it's 100 pages long and fantastic but it is really really depressing. <laughs> We're following this girl whose father has been out of her life and randomly comes back into it but then he starts developing feelings towards her and it's a really dark descent into everything. She then blames herself for her father feeling this way and when he runs off and commits suicide because of his thoughts she blames herself. It is a really sad story so please go into this aware of trigger warnings. It's really quite depressing but it was a good short story. Take from that what you will. Then we have The Island of Dr Moreau by H.G Wells. Again, this is a bind up of more short stories. So in this one, the actual Island of Dr Moreau is 100 pages long, but in all of them, the stories, it's less than 160 pages long and we have four stories in here, which I need to read the rest of them, to be honest. But The Island of Dr Moreau is all about this doctor who is experimenting on animals to turn them into humans. It's really quite horrific, very dark, but really good. It had an amazing atmosphere to it and it made me feel so disturbed when I was reading this. Would highly recommend it for that alone. Um, but yes, again, very short, very quick. Short story collections are one of my favourite things and I love picking them up and just having a little short story to read. I actually need to catch up on all of them. I've started so many and just not carried on. I've read the one story from them and not carried on so I actually need to go back and read a lot of these short story collections. That was before I was really into reading a short story collection over the whole month. Like I would normally just read the one story from it and then move on. So I need to go back into those. Anyway, we also have Jane Austen's Lady Susan's. Again, this is a long one but it is short story. We have three short stories in here. We have The Watsons, Lady Susan and Sandation. I love these books. I've spoken about it recently but even this whole book is less than 180 pages long. Highly recommend this. It's Jane Austen. It's fun. It's romance. It's a bit of light fluff. Lady Susan's in particular is just fun and scandalous and it's just letters talking about Lady Susan and how much of drama she just creates and how she's like this harlot and it's fun. It's a really really good time. I really recommend it if you like the romance side of things or as I've mentioned quite a few times lately is if you're interested in starting Jane Austen this is a good place to start. Back to the spooky stuff we have Turn of the Screw by Henry James. I really liked this one. I don't think it's one of my new favourite gothic classics but I did enjoy it. We're following a governess who's employed to look after two young children except things get really spooky. It's kind of a bit of a ghost story to it but it's left for you to interpret it how how you want. Is there a ghost? Is it something else? Is it the sinister gameskeeper? You know, you, either way you know that it's implied that something horrible has happened to these children and that's why they're lashing out the way they are. It's really, really quite creepy, really quite chilling and I do like the fact that Henry James left it open for you to decide how does this end for you to decide is this a ghost story? Is it someone that with just an overall active imagination? Is it something more sinister? Like it really leaves it up for you to decide. And this one is only, it's 144 pages long. So it's a really short one, really quick, and it's got that ghost element to it, which I really enjoyed. Enjoyed is the wrong word because I was also disturbed at times, but it was a good time. And then we have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Again, this has actually more short stories in it, which I have not read. I need to do that. So we have five short stories in this bind up. Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is only 72 pages long. It's not long at all. Actually, it's even less than that because you have the introduction to get through. Okay, so it's about 60 pages long, really quick to get into. And obviously we are following Dr. Jekyll, who is a scientist who plays around with this serum that he has created to make it so that humans are their best possible selves at all times. The result in the fact is that he creates creates this alter ego self that is called Mr. Hyde and he is all the baser instincts of humankind, really aggressive and everything to do with that. Again, it's another look at morality, at humankind, like it's a really interesting story. And then we have more short stories in here. One of them, The Body Snatcher, I've already read, or what I should say listened to, and that's actually about grave robbers. It's just a fun time. Again, this whole collection is short, it's less 
than 250 pages it's 240 pages long or you can just read one of the short stories in here and it will not take long at all those are all the ones that I have read and really enjoyed some of them as I said some of the short story collections I've read all of them some of them I actually need to read more of and I thought I would talk about a few short stories that I have on my TBR that I'm really excited to read so aside from the fact that I have these three with short stories in that I need to finish I also have four other ones that I wanted to just quickly mention so we have Animal Farm by George Orwell this is less than 100 pages long I really need to read it it's a bit on my TBR I recently acquired it in a local charity bookstore um, I am really intrigued this is definitely more of a political um, piece but I've never actually read it but it is taught in schools we also have The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham this is more of a children's classic and we're following these different creatures within the woodlands and just following their lives. I'm, I'm excited. I think this one's going to be a really cozy one to read, kind of curl up. There is snow on the cover, so I think I'm going to save this one until like Christmas, January time for those winter months. But again, this one is less than 200 pages long. It's 192 pages. Never read it. I'm intrigued. Then we have one that I know is going to be weird, and that's Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. And this is really short. This is, yeah less than 100 pages we are looking at about 93 pages long i've never read it i've never read any of franz kafka's work but i am intrigued i just know that someone wakes up as a bug don't know how that's going to go i think it's just going to be a really weird time and then the other one that i've got is agnes gray by anne bronte this is really high up on my list i have to admit franz kafka is probably the lowest unless you guys tell me otherwise um but agnes gray is probably the highest on my list to get to i really want to read more anne bronte and this one is just over 150 pages long so it's not going to take long to read at all desperately want to read it this is more of an actual personal experience novel written by agnes gray which is why i'm so much more invested as well highly intrigued by that i really can't wait to read it so it was very happy when i found that thrifted as well classics are amazing for thrifted finds i might also do a video at some point of just different classic editions that I have or where I go to get my classics like let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in but yes these were 12 short classics that I really liked that are less than 250 pages because I couldn't keep it less than 200 most of them were less than 200 pages to be quite honest just a couple of my favorite ones which are a bit longer but really good books would highly recommend all of them there are so so many more short stories out there like just short classic books in general there are loads and loads to choose from but these are 12 that I very much enjoyed. Let me know, have you read any short classics? Would you read any of them? Out of the four ones that I said I want to read, do you have any recommendations which one I should prioritise? Let me know. And if you've read any other short classic books that I haven't mentioned here, do put those in the comments below as well. But I have been talking for long enough, I think, so I am going to go. I think for this one, I don't really know what emoji to put. You know what, we're coming, we're in October. Let's put a pumpkin emoji. So let's go over pumpkin emoji because a lot of these were gothic classics that is where I specialize in that is my favorite <laughs> but I hope you have enjoyed anyway so thank you so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it subscribe if you want to comment to let me know that you're here social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one mm -hmm.